This is London calling in the overseas service of the British Broadcasting Corporation. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. Pocket battleship, Graf Spee, which has been for many weeks preying upon the trade of the South Atlantic, and met her doom. Mother dear, I'm riding you from somewhere in France, hoping this finds you well. We shall fight in France, we shall fight on the seas and oceans, we shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall never surrender. of the RAF with the Navy. And Rodney, which did some pretty work with her 16-inch guns. Ah, this is not the end. Uh, it is not even the beginning of the end. Uh, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. <laughs> but the Japanese high command had declared that a state of war existed with Great Britain and the United States. The German Navy, so proudly built up by that smug strategical genius, the Führer, is slowly but surely being wiped out. Now the Scharnhorst, the 26,000-ton battleship, has gone to the bottom not unusual result of action against the Royal Navy. Led by a powerful British escort, the main body of the surrendered Italian fleet is transferred from Malta to Alexandria. Signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea, and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Force. across the China Sea for the last large-scale surrender at Hong Kong, where today, warships of the Royal Navy ride at anchor in the harbor. Well, hello and welcome back to the port. I'm the Gaff Major, and this is a, a little bit of a sneaky extra live stream I guess you could say to make up for the lack of a live stream on the uh, past Friday uh, I was out at a work due so I couldn't really stream from a Thai restaurant unfortunately um, but yes uh, today we're just going to be really focusing in on the Drake um, reason being is it's the only content of interest this patch for me uh, so 
So we're going to be honing in on that. Uh, hopefully I am coming through all nice and loud and clear though, but if there are any audio issues, please let me know in the chat and I'll try and rectify them as quickly as possible. But yeah, um, let's see who we've got in the chat. We've got Mecha Man. Hello, hello, hello. Um, the, only, the only British line reigning is the British Battle Cruisers. He has a tre tech tree. Yeah, that's that's very true. That is actually very true. Action Bubba, chaps, is Drake something to get excited about? I don't see radar. That's a fair point. Um, Drake... I'm intrigued and I want to like it so I'm going to give it a, a dabble, I'm going to give it a chance and uh, I'm going to see where we end up and that's always the whole purpose of this live stream is to see is Drake worth it. So obviously from the initial perspective she will cost you 25 million credits and she is a tier 8 which obviously means you're going to be stuck with that tier 8 matchmaking as always. Now. Um, Let's go straight to the loader and uh, almost comment on that thing that um, the action pump has said. And basically, that Drake does not come with radar. Um, now, Albemore does uh, on World Warships Legends, but Albemore does not over on World Warships PC. So, Drake is definitely a more direct reflection of her PC self, I guess you could say. She doesn't have that radar. Um, so, uh, whether that could be subject to change, well, you never know. Um, so, that does mean that you are stuck with some catapult fighters, which really are starting to get pretty redundant at this tier. We do have sonar, which can be swapped out for the defensive air fire consumable. Nothing too special, really. The heel, now she does have a super heel, something that British cruisers do have going up. Um, Saxon are about for a division, much obliged. So I'll probably drop in an invite, but it will be a tier 8 only uh, live stream. Does all, hello, hello, hello. So, yes, a repair party healing 800 HP per second for 20 seconds. Um, that's healing. Um, 16,000 16, HP. So, that, that's that's. That's not bad, and you get two of those, so that's about another 32,000 HP altogether there, which isn't, ah, it's nothing to turn your nose up at. And we'll see how a very typical and generic damage control party. Uh, we'll continue looking at, let's go to the overview. So obviously, in sequential torpedoes, yeah, okay, British. Hidden, so we've got to take a look at that concealment. Apparently, she's got quite good concealment. Uh, Pyromania, so her HE shells, they do have a 24% chance of setting a fire. And uh, the interesting thing that they haven't mentioned is that the, the HE does have very good penetration. Uh, it's one quarter penetration, which means these hail explosive shells will be able to penetrate up to 52 no, 58 millimeters of armor, um, which means practically anything and everything. Now, going to the armor view, um, obviously, I've got the stuff important flagged up, but let's have a look at the general overview. Now, unfortunately, it your armor is not getting much better in comparison to the album. Or, um, your bow and your stern is capable of well, denying 14 inch shells, but you're at tier 8. And you're going up against legendaries, and there's not a lot of 14-inch guns left, uh, especially when it comes to battleships. Um, against cruisers, I guess you'll be survival enough. Um, now, the deck can resist 16-inch shells, while your main armoured belt can resist 15-inch shells. Um, so you can angle against 15-inch gun battleships, but generally most battleships are starting to get 18, well, 16, I should say, inch guns at the tier. So it's not, not great. Unfortunately, you're not armoured enough. Your superstructure is big and it is squishy. That is something to obviously make note of. Now, your lower armoured belt, which also is part of your torpedo bulge, is actually quite substantial, um, really. Uh, kind of, imp kind of impressed with that lower armoured belt, but the problem is it's just the lower armoured belt. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to rely upon it during engagements against battleships because it only slivers your uh, your citadel protection your turrets obviously nicely thickly armored and they do go all the way down to the citadel so um pretty standard stuff uh, i guess it's worth noting the turrets are pretty boxy um which means that i suspect the turrets are going to be quite easy to get knocked out on this ship just because they're quite boxy um the chance of a shell ricocheting is probably going to be quite low and more likely going to be punching straight in so it'd be interesting to see how that turns out when it comes to the action and the citadel it is big it is long and it is above the waterline there's no denying it and uh if you're interested uh the location of the thicker outer armor let's uh, highlight it there matches up with the inner citadel if that makes any sense 
So yes, the Citadel is drawn on the outside of the ship, so everyone can locate it nice and easily, um, which is absolutely perfect, I'm sure. <laughs> Ah, Stuart, hello, hello, hello. Uh, you need a division. Uh, it's going to be mostly tier 8, but we'll see. Uh, Macaman, at least the Drake, uh, you don't have the uh, step deck Sisdell. That is very true, that is very true. Um, we'll just have a quick look at it again, but yeah, you don't have that step in the middle, that shell trap. Um, but it is, it does feel bigger, I guess you could say. Stats. Now these are the base stats, 40,000 HP. So interestingly, you got to remember you can recover like 32,000 HP from two repair parties. So um, you got once you say you put fully packed on or something like that, you're going to have more HP in repair parties than you are going to have base HP, um, which is a rather amusing fact, I guess you could say. Um, not really too much more to really add. We've already looked at the armor. Torpedo damage reduction is only 22%, which doesn't seem unreasonable for a very large cruiser artillery obviously we got those three times three 234 millimeter guns uh, so nine guns in total in three treble gun turrets we've got a our alpha and bravo turret bravo turret super firing and charlie turret at the rear frame range 14.2 that is on the short side it does feel like and also a reload of 20 seconds so that is going to take a while um, HE shell damage 3,850, fire chance 24%. Remembering those high explosive shells will be able to penetrate up to 58 millimeters of armor. Uh, AP shells also, I've heard, aren't anything to squiff at either. Uh, the arm piercing does apparently hit quite hard on this one as well. Uh, probably use that gun caliber, and also that is quite a hefty chunk of uh, AP damage you can do. Secondary armament is the same as the main battery on the Jutland. You got three of those each well three press side I should say each one obviously a dual gun turret range of five kilometers that's interesting I think it's usually like four four point five so that does that's a little bit more um, than normal I think you could say Torpedoes, you've got one launcher per side, it's a quadruple launcher, 96 second reloads, 10 kilometer range, 62 knots, pretty standard torpedoes, I think they're the same as the album in fact AA defense is, wow, a good mix. You've got some 20 mils, some 40 mils, and obviously the 130 mil dual purpose battery. It ranges out to five kilometers, but most of it is close in self defense. Your AA rating isn't that amazing. Um, and at the moment, with legendary tier carriers being few and far between, um, it may not be entirely worthwhile investing to AA as of yet. And maybe in the future, when legendary tier carriers actually become more, more common, I guess you could say. Maneuverability, obviously the base rotor shift is 15.5 seconds, which is quite hefty. However, bear in mind you will probably most likely be sticking steering gears module 2 and 3 on this, so um, that will come down quite significantly, I hope. Uh, so we will obviously be popping the commander onto this shortly. Also, speed of 33.3 knots, it's, you're probably starting to feel a bit slow for the tier, I would say. Um, but for a British cruiser, that's pretty standard. Concealment, tech speed by sea is 12.2 kilometers. Now, they are saying the ship is concealed. However, please bear in mind, that is only two kilometers less than your main battery range when you initially start with this ship. So you're gonna, <laughs> so you've got stompy guns and stompy detectability. So you can get close, but you get, you're gonna have to get close to shoot at the enemy, unfortunately. Now, what I will probably be doing is I will be playing this ship naked to start with. Obviously, just with the first couple of four modules. And then once we play done, say, one or two games with this ship in its very stock situation, we will then GXP all the way through it, and then we'll see what it's like when it's fully upgraded. So, but before we do that, let's have a look at what some of these upgrades are. So, obviously, reduce the reload to, down to 18 seconds. That's quite nice. But notice, you're not getting any more range with that one. What about this one? There we go. Okay, we're getting a bit more range here. We're getting one additional 1.4 kilometers, pushing out to 15.6. That's still not amazing though. The range on this is very, very stumpy. Now, hull points going up to 46,000 is quite nice, and the rudder shift dropping down to 11 seconds. So I don't think the rudder is going to be too much of a concern once you get this thing upgraded. I suspect the way to go with this would probably be getting the hull upgrade first, 
then getting the, probably the targeting systems module and then getting the final reload buff and turret traverse buff on this ship. Anyway, talking about playing it naked, let's get this ship purchased and into our port. Yes, please. There we go. Ship obtained. We can now have Drake. So, first of all, um, aiming system secondary. Not going to do secondary. I don't think you're going to do AA. You could possibly do turret traverse. That is semi tempting. Um, but I'm kind of thinking. I think I might go for aiming systems module one to start with. Go for the nice all rounded module uh, because that will. Um, it will help us a little bit um, to gauge what the guns are like and if we need it. No radar, very disappointing. She has, has no radar over on PC, so um, no radar in comparison to what she is normally. Um, a little disappointing because we've been spoiled with Albemarle gaining radar, but what we were expecting, I don't think we can say we're disappointed. Rudder shift, minus 20%, definitely going to be going for that because that's going to be definitely worthwhile. When it comes to the next one, you're already concealed. You, there could be an argument to maybe reducing your detectability more. If you take this minus 10%, you're going to reduce your detectability by another 1.4 kilometers, which is quite tempting. But I think a lot of people are going to be going for that steering gears module 3. She is known for being an open water cruiser, so you're probably going to want to be playing her to those advantages. Last but not least, we can improve AA, improve the range and dispersion, uh, torpedo reload, or main battery reload I think there's a real good argument here between main battery module 3 and gunfire control systems 2 plus 5% range I should sorry I should make a correction regarding the concealment that I mentioned before because it's minus 10% that'd be reducing your tech speed by 1.2 kilometers not 1.4 so plus 5% range would increase your range by 0 0.7 kilometers pushing your range from 14.2 to 14.9 um, or you can reduce your reloads by 10% which would take off two seconds which would take it down to 18 seconds But that does increase. I think I might go for Gunfire Control Module 2 to start with uh, because I think she's going to need that. Now, when it comes to commanders, let's uh, take a look at this ship now in standard. I'll, uh, I'll do the commander build and then I'm going to catch up with the chat. And in that way, I've kind of almost reviewed the ship in one nice little sitting, I guess you could say. Uh, here she is. So, command wise, I'm going to go for Bruce Fraser. I've got Bruce Fraser set up on my. Cheshire, uh, the purpose is it's basically a fire starter build, uh, plus 2%, plus 5%, 3%, so total of plus 5% fire chance, plus 5% bear speed, uh, plus 5% cruiser shell grouping, minus 5% dispersion, and minus 10% reload, uh, plus more speed, plus 4.75%, uh, plus another 3%, uh, plus uh, minus 4.8% rotor shift. I believe before we put the commander on, what is our rudder shift down to? 7.4 seconds. Ooh. Ooh. So maybe Fraser's not the right idea to go for, because I'm only going to get minus 4.7. I think this is going to end up being a tenant build. And tenant is an AA build on mine, but if you take a tenant build, you're going to get minus 10%. That's another 1.5 seconds, minus 7%. Uh, that's going to be uh, still going to be a really rough rudder shift. I mean, for, for, for experimental sake, let's put tent on. What's the rudder shift drop down to? 4.8. That is manageable. If I went for Fraser build, 6.7. I'd like to get it under five seconds, so I think you're going to have to go for a tenant build because you're going to want full speed ahead, better ruches, and steer clear. Does mean I'm not going to be getting the amount of DPM that I want out of the guns, but they should hit quite hard as it is. We are going to go for an AA build. What does that give us AA wise? 83. Mm. I wonder if there's a suitable commander available that I could use without compromising. Uh, you could have been useful. What about you? No, you're useless. 
No, I'm going to stick with Tenant, even though it's an AA build. Right, flags? Something British. Camo? Historical camo? Doesn't look half bad. But we need another camo to go on here. Oh, I could be cheeky and put that on. That doesn't look actually that bad. Too British. <laughs> There's ever such a thing. That one doesn't look too bad. We need more paint. Let's see. Where's those? Um, yep, let's do that. Bish bash bosh. There we go. And also, let's get that on. I think you want the range. Right, what are we looking at range wise? 15.3. Okay, it helps. Maneuverability 37.8 knot speed, 4.8 second rudder shift, concealment 11.7. Okay, I think that might be manageable. With that done, let's have a look at the chat. Let's see, uh, let's see how much you've been uh, ripping into my uh, command build while we've been at it. <laughs> um, let's see. I might as well say hello to everyone who's here as well. Let's see, where did I get to? Uh, Mega Man, uh, at least with Drake, you don't have the step. Yeah, I think I read that one. No, okay, Drake is not good at all. The ship is like a punch in the face for all the British lovers. Let's... Wait and see, Naraka. I think you cool. might be hedging your bets a little early. We'll have to see, but... Oh, hello, welcome. Paolo, no radar. Yeah, I've covered those. So, that's fine. Uh, I'll do eight, not a problem. Yeah, Magman 8 is longer. That is true. The system is a lot longer. And well, Criff, evening, evening. Darker. I take Cheshire a drink any time, any day. But that's probably more to for the tier, um, I think. Because um, Cheshire has got a lot of things going for her at the tier. Hang around, from what I read on Morgan, a good build is aim one, rudder two, concealment one, and uh, gun fire control. That's, yep, that's, that's, I'm, I've been tempted with that one, but I think you want the rudder shift, I think. Evening, Jeff Dave, evening, evening. Only tenant for Elvmore and Drake. Agility is a must, yeah, I think you're going to want tenant for this for sure. As Erling Belfast, she's not going to give you the rudder shift. She's really not. I don't, I don't think. Also, her base trait's all about um, smoke, isn't it? Let's have a look. Where is she? Yeah, you, I mean, you're going to get the minus 10, but you're, you're going to miss out on the minus 7. I think that with Drake, you, it's all going to be about the rudder, I think. For those of you who like your agile cruisers, you might get on with her. Uh, the 20-second reload is a pain. That is true. I stuck Jericho on mine uh, with Mim, Belly, and Madden. I'm right, going for a reload build. Might struggle with the survivability because you're only going to have steer clear, which is only going to give you a maximum of a minus 7% rudder shift. So your rudder shift's going to still really chug along with that one, unfortunately. Uh, GT is, is the only option, it's tier 8, you will only be up against very big guns with overmatch, that's very true, slot 4, only reload, I Chris retracted the comments, so on that basis, I'm going to see who's kicking around, I think Tazul said he was kicking around, I think um, Sykes is saying he's kicking around, so let's see what we can sort out. Um, Just remember, people, you're going to have to turn your crossplay, uh, so um, so you can actually crossplay. Well, I think you've been. It should work. Right, yeah. Drake time. So we're going to play a couple of games uh, with the naked Drake, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, so well, non-upgraded, uh, we might as well stick a, a, a battle, uh, an XP booster on it. Might as well see if we can save a little bit. Um, yeah, we're just. Just put some of that on. Uh, is tier eight probably going to want that? There we go. Belarusia, steer clear. Belarusia also reduce my textability. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jericho with uh, look at me now will obviously reduce your textability. That. Hmm. 
I think you might be... I think if you weren't going to do that, I'd probably want to use Daphne's Erlang Baltimore as an inspiration. I think if you're going to go down the concealment and obviously a bit of maneuverability build, you probably want to be like inspiring with... Um, uh, is it Mikawa? Mikawa and maybe his Erlang Baltimore? Okay, let's see what we've got. Jutland, Knetzov, Albemarle, Wichita, uh, Carrot, Zetone, Missouri. Remember, Missouri has radar people. Kansas, Pomer. Uh, first battle, and I bet there will be three times the average edition. Oh, thankfully not. Part of me is intrigued with, um, the, I think the choke traverse on this might be quite good. That is a characteristic of the British Heavy Cruisers. It does look like it's quite quick. Pardon me. Alright. Well, there's no, there's no Yamatos. Good news. Uh, Missouri's 16-inch guns. Cam there's a carrot. She does. Oh, someone's chewed it up. It's Angela Merkel. <laughs> oh, why do I always realise the players' names a little bit too late? Missouri's over there. Sack's got to watch himself in the Missouri. Ah, dang. We lost the Jutland, but we managed to get away with that. Missouri there is dangerous. But she's out of my range. I suspect the carrot's going to try and charge me. There you go, that's what I was expecting with the turrets. Is slightly awkward because this dang side of the map. Myself from the Missouri. Oh, damn. I 
Doesn't feel too bad with a 4.8 second run shift. Missouri will be awkward. I think we've got the flank push, they strong armed. Go away with that. Mm. I could probably drop off the sexability, I think. Do we push in against the album more? It's going to be hard to say. Yeah, the reload reduction is quite good. 6.5 seconds. Hmm. Yeah, the floating brick is, uh, is something I am personally concerned about. It does feel very Cheshire-ish. Although the fire chance at the moment hasn't been too impressive. Definitely on the light side when it comes to the amount of fires we got. Six minutes is okay, but under four is always better. I, I think you'd probably struggle to get under four seconds with the uh, with the Drake. Okay, there goes the album wall. I might be able to engage the Missouri. If we've been, well, I suspect I've got rather lucky. Tandy guns are not that punchy as expected. I ch uh, teared up uh, Cheshire in, uh, in a worst enemy situation. Yeah, I was hoping the fire chance would be a bit more than this. So we have 24%, you'd expect I should have at least 10 fires, <laughs> I guess you could potentially say.
I wonder where the French ship went. This is well. At least we probably get to finally test the repair party, I guess you could say. Close quarters is not where she likes. Oh, was I really the last one? 71,000 damage in the end, but it took a long time to get there. I still end up coming middle of the pack. Oh, do I dare? What if I do the Fraser? Six point seven second rudder. We can improve that. 5.6. Say it's chance of 5.6 second rudder shift there. Five point six might be should be workable. And we buffed the fire chance by 5% and reduced the reload. So maybe it might feel a bit better. At the moment, it doesn't feel like the guns yield the return promised. But that could have just been the engagement I was in. God, this map feels small at tier 8. Yugamo. Summer, Shimakaze, Rune, Rupert, Alask, Yamito, Yamato, Montana. Quite, mm, I'm the only cruiser. I think cruisers do seem a bit rare at the moment. Sure, I'm Asian chap. Move uh, more tier eight that I can't afford to buy. <laughs> uh, you'll grind it out eventually. I'm just gonna let the DDs move, see where they go. Enemies already dropping a smoke screen, interestingly. Maybe the summer's dropping this early smoke screen. Part of me is surprised that they didn't give her longer range. But then I think she would. If, if they gave her more range, she would just sit back and abuse that range. Enemy 
think Alaska is 16 inch guns. At least we managed to get something out of one fight this game. I guess sometimes it might just depend on the kind of battleships that you're up against and how freely they like to use their repair parties. That's better. We managed to get two fires out of three volleys. Where's the nose of the yummy? There's the nose of the yummy. Let's get skinny and hope for the best. Oh, I'm not even locked on. That's uh, that's gonna hit the iron jet. <laughs> not 52,000 damage with five hours fires, so we're definitely doing better with the fire front this time. I like to pick up Chung Mu as soon as possible as well. I like the Hsing Yang, uh, but I don't have credits for the Chinese Atlanta either. Oh, we might be able to actually get this. Oh, am I locked on? I am locked on. What's that? That's a Montana. So I just got to watch myself against the Montana. That's better. I think if when I can get it, getting a fire every volley is actually really can be quite nice. I wonder if she just needs that little bit more of a fire chance, maybe. Can't touch the destroyers right yet. Let's get a plane up. Near up to seven fires, which I like. Eight fires. That's not Shimakazi torpedoes, that's a Shimakazi hunting in the swing screen. Although, yeah, she is lacking radar. 
I wouldn't say I've necessarily missed it because I never want to be close enough to use it because of the battleship heavy tier. That's for the summers, but no idea if it would make contact, but we're now getting the enemy, I think because the enemy's not really resisted much on this flank, yes, they managed to get a nice early head start, I guess you could say, with the uh, with the capping, but they've allowed us to roll around the flank, and that's kind of pinched them. We've got another Yamato that we can start setting on fire. Oh, down. Oh, there she is. Another fire. This game's been a lot more yielding in fires, and all I've done is add 5% fire chance. I wonder if that's just enough to like to counter, say, some of the anti fire style commander builds that you end up with battleships of this tier. The gun grouping seems good enough. have to trial this commander build a little bit more but it does almost feel slightly better I'm gonna put the sonar on just because there's only torpedo boats left and I could quite easily be torpedo food do hit hard against destroyers, which is quite nice. I think we might save the plane until the sonar's finished. Just in case. Uh, Non-locked volleys uh, equals test of true skill. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's test of my own Pure stupidity, because <laughs> I should have should have twigged that. Uh, yeah, when the work shifts uh, now, uh, can't play as much, uh, so not making as much silver might take up uh, piracy and uh, try and capture ships I don't own while it while it matches. Oh, I think that would work. Okay, let's launch the aircraft while our sonar's on cool down. There's a Shimkazi way out there. Summer, but I think she's dead. Hmm. Well, that game felt a lot better. The guns definitely did the damage that I wanted them to. That game. Fifteen fires. 124,000 damage, 86 hits on target. The torpedoes you don't want to use, third on the deep. Definitely a better situation that time. 15 fires, that's nicer. Right, now let's get it upgraded. So let's do this. Another 5 million, another 625,000. I have a 625,000 plus the global XP. And let's see what we're dealing with now, because now I bet the rudder shift drops. Yeah, rudder shift drops all the way down to four seconds, and that's a non rudder shift build. So this is where, with Fraser, I would then be tempted to switch it back over to the shell group in a main battery dispersion. 
and that only takes to a 4.8 second row shift, which is what we were having with a tenant build on the non-upgraded version. That's nice. 11.7 detectability, artillery is now pushing out to 16.2. Yes. Okay, this is the, so she's going to feel a bit clunky when you first get her, especially with that rudder shift and the range. But I think this, you can do it based on the very small sample I've done. Um, it's just down to the commander build. I think you want to be aiming for your rudder shift to be under six. That's where you want it to be. Drake's definitely not a DD hunter with that reload. Very true. Which I think is another reason why, um, okay, she doesn't have radar. And having radar would be a nice, say, team um, helping ability. However, personally, she's not. If she did have radar, she wouldn't be able to utilize it too much. She's only going to be able to, say, get two volleys off. It's very much like the Missouri having radar. You don't have it for yourself. So with Drake not having radar, it's not exactly the end of the world. The thing that partially surprises me is that Drake doesn't have two sets of torpedo launchers per side. Very much like Neptune, she only has the one instead. Because I think if she had two sets of torpedo launchers on each side, like Neptune, she would have a bit more of a, a close quarters bite. Um, with Drake, she has no real close quarters bite. So she's got, there's no advantage of this ship getting in close at all. Chongmu, Hayate, Shimakaze, Shimakaze, Pomme. Republic, Alaska, Marlboro, Yamato. I'll be very careful I don't get myself pinned. I was working as a cruiser killer at medium range, playing it a bit like Kronstadt. Why did you not... That was a nice cheeky like 6,000 uh, damage hit from the first volley. Dazul, you're going to have to be careful just because you know you're going up against the triple BB division. In this case, I think uh, Sax is going to be doing a quite a bit of the heavy lifting if he's going to go torpedoing battleships. Shimakaze is already torpedoed the Hayate in the middle. Oh boy. Let's go after the, the Yamato again. In some regards, part of me is a little bit surprised that Drake doesn't come with spotter aircraft. The iron indicator always lags out a little bit. Right, guns off to our other sides because I think we're gonna. We might be able to get one more cheeky volley out on the last. on the Yamato, I should say. Oh, a double fire that time. Can we just cheekily get Alpha and Bravo tights away? Oh, dang, not locked in. 
free test of skill. No. Double fire on the Alask. I bet you the division is doing timed volleys. Uh, maybe, not sure. Only six fires so far. You're almost going to get like, with most volleys, you're going to get like 5,000 damage and um, a fire. Like, I haven't even touched the mole, bro. And the mole has only got 14 inch guns, so actually, I could probably bully the mole, bro. I can actually bow tank the Bulbra. Or I could just dodge the whole volley instead. <laughs> Let's see, the Bulbra's got quite a race set now, so I wonder if my 9 inch, 9 and a bit inch AP will. That's not too bad. Oh, she's uh She's got a quick reload, I've got to remember that. She's almost got the same reload as me. Oh, she still shatters, we need to be a bit closer. Shoot, we'll try one more volley. Now we're getting pens. Sub sub five kilometer range. That's another 170. Which should be fair for the tier. As you see, this match major is the only cruise against four DDs and five BBs. So basically, major's team at the moment is starting with a handicap. No, it's Drake's not a handicap, but yeah. Oh, I know. You, I know what you mean actually, because I'm the because our te our team is the only team that had a cruiser. God, it's strange. Third though, it took me ten fires this time. Definitely feeling a lot more confident with Drake now. Sack stole my kill. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, you learn very quickly with sax. That's just that's just a thing. Right? <laughs> Uh, and this is the usual bowels, uh, so a Drake, St. Louis, player style is a, um, completely opposite what we get yeah, used to with album one, Charles Mattel, for example. Uh, teamwork is all <laughs> teamwork. No, no, I ain't team. If there is me. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I think um, initially with the Drake, think go for a fire and maneuverability build with Bruce Fraser and plan to swap steer clear for the um, uh, the, the gun focus focused one once you start getting the ship upgraded pardon me especially once you've got the road shift on but yeah it feels a lot more manageable Elbing Z46 Shimakaze Shijo Buffalo, Worcester, Mashashi, Marco Polo, Montana. Mm -hmm. It's always a slightly awkward one. Poor way to camish down and I still kill it. <laughs> yeah, that's actually <laughs> uh, be careful free salvers from an Albin Drake is uh, Drake is gone, yeah. Zoo and the Japanese Nelson. Better guesswork, but we'll see. Buffalo. I think it was. No, no, we actually did get a hit. Oh my god. There's the shells. Oh, what is that? It's the 46 and the Albin. Okay. Oh. That high is feeling a bit risky going up there against the Buffalo. Enemy team's strong army in the that bottom corner. Pretty standard stuff. So I gotta see, I gotta engage a buffalo, which is gonna be dang awkward. Because the buffalo is only gonna get better and better as I close and as he closes in. Oh, we're detected. That's interested. So that means there's a destroyer out this way. It's not the Albing. It's not the Z46. What is it going to be? And it's going to be the Shimakaze. Oh, God, right. So not. We're going to have to. Shimakaze is playing out wide.
So I've got to try and play Find the Shimakaze and all this. Ugh. try and find a shimikaze in all this. I've got no idea where he is. And it's probably going to take two torpedo hits from the shimikaze. So this is where we could go back to the initial comment that the, the Drake is not a destroyer hunter. to port torpedoes direct front okay the shimmer is practically broadcasted his position remember he's got to have enough wiggle room to get out of this I don't know I'm gonna go on a bit of a shimmer hunt Because if I don't, the issue is that means there's a Shimakaze up this side of the map. Our team has taken the lead. The plane launched. Just keep your head on the swivel. Victory is in sight. There he is. There you go, so the AA, oh, that's a shame, because I was, I was actually getting into hunting that Shimakaze, because I was about to say, he's got his AA on, and you could see his AA was shooting the aircraft, so that kind of gave an indication of the direction that he was. Probably not, yeah, not too impressive that game. We kind of hit a buffalo for a bit, and then we had to try and, basically we were just using ourselves, ourselves as a blocker against the Shimakaze. It, it wasn't a nice job. Like it not, it's not what the Drake's designed for, uh, but it was a job that needed to be done nonetheless. Of if I hadn't done it, it would have left our entire flank open to the Shimakaze just to roll in, sink a couple of battleships, and go for the cap. So it's one of those quite weird ones. We we did something that wasn't advantageous for ourselves, but advantageous for the team. Oh. I think it's just one of those strange ones where. You end up, yeah, doing like quite good teamwork play, um, but yeah, you don't get the rewarding out out of it because um, yeah, you don't get the damage or anything like that. You don't get the shiny shinies. Oh, Griff, all the best, ah, Cheerio, Griff. Look after yourself. Z forty six, summer daring, crunched up, minnow. Uh, Alaska, Maine, Yamato, Gross, Kerr first. Hmm, okay. 
Hopefully this time we can get something a bit more rewarding than um, playing barrier defense against the Shimakaza. shortly. I think um, refill station is quite a nice skill to have on the Drake. Especially early game. Our shells even landed right daring in the middle. What the? <laughs> oh, the poor thing. Yeah, oh, summer. They are quite. I think once you got some of these accuracy dispersion buffs and stuff, those showers are really quite accurate. Which I think obviously is another kind of like the feather you need to put in the Drake's hat, because by doing that you kind of, you're accepting that you realise it's going to take a while. So by improving the accuracy you're trying to, obviously, assuming you can aim correctly, you're trying to make the most out of every single shell. I think the repair parties also make Drake a little bit forgiving. She definitely needs them in this environment. a nice like 8,000 HE volley.
No, that was only a 1,200. Right, time to close in the mop up, I guess you could say. Let's uh, launch an aircraft first. Enemy destroyers spotted me on the occasion between the islands. So again, we're in this odd position where we're going to go hunter, hunter destroyer. So it's probably not going to be a high damage game because most of the enemy ships have have already bought it. Uh, I think that's probably going to be a miss. Oh, we did get one hit. Well, two two shells. So we've played Drake for five games after this. I think I might like it, or like it enough. Obviously I've had the, the, the grace of God to not have to grind it. Well, I think she's playable from base. She doesn't fare too badly once fully upgraded. Z46 torpedoes, are they that? That's weird, that torpedo was going the wrong way, unless that was the summer's torpedo. Break the hundred K, I don't know. But nice. Oh, Z forty six is way out there. Stations requesting fire on the designated target. That's the uh, crunch down. Okay. Not in range, but maybe once my legendary trick goes off. Oh, there's my shells. Those ones.
Nope. Near the table. Has some strange games. Only really had like one game where we were able to really get our teeth into it, but all in all, I don't mind it. Probably one I could see myself playing a lot more frequently. Get you off, fair enough. Hmm. I mean, it'd be interesting to see where they go with Goliath after this. Let's see. We'll do one more, and then we'll uh, and then we'll call that stream. I think a nice hour and a half stream focusing on a single ship. Bit of a review, bit of a playthrough, get a couple of different games. Seems like a, a fair. Give, give, give her a fair yardstick to see how she does. Okay, this might be a bit more up her street, although it's a lot of destroyers. Yamato, Pomo, Pelme, Colbert, don't see many of those. Rune, Shimakaze, Shimakaze, Z46, Z46. Definitely makes you think or feel that the uh, the German and Japanese destroyers are strong this evening with Shimakaze's higher taste and Z46's. What's the occasional American? Yamato is still as popular as ever. At least one in every match. Now, Rune I haven't got too much experience with, but it's quite interesting to see how frequent it is. Oh, one thing I haven't really mentioned is with the with the Drake, she does have you do have to get pretty broad to bring all your turrets to bear. So you aren't gonna have to bear that in mind when you're kiting. Potentially another reason why uh you don't want to be getting too close. You want to increase that reaction time between your ship and uh, those firing guns. The bigger the distance, the more time you have to respond to those incoming shells. Z46. Z46. Shimakaz is in the middle, I bet. Gone unspotted. Four hits and three thousand damage to the Shimakaze. A lot of torpedoes coming into the middle. Oh, from a oh. At least Suzu got a medal. <laughs> oh, a glorious death, sir. Glorious. Ooh. On that bombshell, I, I, I don't want to find out. Ooh. Hopefully the iron deeds it. Yeah. What the hell's going on here? Six. 
you realize he's just playing the long-range torpedo game? There's definitely a cruiser down here. Colbert. Is that a Yarito firing HE? That's a surprise, I must say. We also have the cold bear, unable to actually hit anything. This is a bit dangerous, isn't it? Oh, this is a... I'm getting very, very lucky in regards to my own survivability. This is very, very risky. Oh, she's not looking. Best work, fellas. So thank you for letting me play with you. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Oh my God, since I've got my flights in PC up and running, I've been slowly acquiring all the peripherals necessary uh, for a full sim. I have two instrument panels, and now I'm oh, about to say hello to Yamato yeah, at very close range. Try and guess how survive would not, not this close. Just, uh, uh. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Yami. I will ram you. like every advantage so he goes nope <laughs> I'm going to flunk this
cruiser. We have no more HP. Um, do we even have a chance of winning this? Wait, there's a destroyer around here somewhere. Maybe. I don't know. I think the enemy's just gonna win. I don't think I can be. I don't think I can be a hero and pull this one back. I was expecting to die very badly, um, so I've kind of just like not bothered with the caps or anything like that. And now I'm in the position where actually maybe I could have done something, but um, I don't think I. I don't think I reach you. Where are you going? You going over there? I should have died a long time ago. I should be alive. AP is probably not a good idea, but I think we're going to go with Six, not, not the highest damage game we had, uh, but it's been the, the, the most intriguing. Um, I should have died ages ago over at Charlie, and this game definitely didn't have the strongest of starts. Um, uh, Saxon to Zul, I, I won't mention anything, but yeah, <laughs> but, but yeah, um, Drake, I think has potential. I think it's a ship I'm going to like. Um, playing her on upgraded. Um, I think will be a struggle. You will have to focus on maneuverability and you won't be getting a lot of damage out of her. Uh, focus on fire chance is definitely also worthwhile. Um, however, um, yeah, until she's fully upgraded, you're not going to get. She's not going to come with all those bells and whistles. Um, but when she got all the bells and whistles, yeah, I think she's quite nice. She has some nice potential. Well, the game's going to wrap up. There we go. Um, oh, here's a couple of a couple of, couple of additional people who popped by. DMB Dark Magic, uh, American Maid, Vas Vegas is here. Hello, hello. He talked the DDI. I, ah, damn, I didn't think of that. And uh, Doctor Cardrew. Hello, hello, hello. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to wrap up there. Um, I've given the uh, I've given the Drake a definite good spin. Um, definitely seen what she's made of um, and we have seen some I'm just gonna just just misuse sax but much obliged sax and Zul for coming along but yeah we've given Drake a good spin uh, we have done one two three four five six games this stream in Drake um, un we did two games of her being unupgraded got some reasonable results uh, and then we've been playing her fully upgraded 
Uh, it's been a bit... To be honest, some of the games, it hasn't really been Drake's fault. It's just been just the way it rolls out sometimes. If you, if you catch my drift, you know, it's like... Unfortunately, every play, even if you are a good player, if you end up in a game where, like, there's not much happening, there's not much you can really do about it. There's not the sudden, like, press a button and all the enemy ships come to you so you can engage them. Um, so we have had the, some of those very odd games where there's not been much going on where we are uh, but we end up just having to be on that flank uh, you can't just pick your ship up and move it across the map unfortunately but yeah drink i don't mind her i quite like her okay i think i think a lot of people are gonna go yeah she's she's not got radar um but i don't i wouldn't say i necessarily miss having radar because if you did have radar you're only going to get two volleys on an enemy dd and yeah, so you hit hard, but yeah, you won't be able to get too much out of her. But yeah, I like her. She is big though, and she is chunky. Anyway, let's see. I'd like to say thank you to everyone who has popped by. And if you have enjoyed the stream, feel free to give it a fun, thumbs up. James GG in the uh, last one. Oh, much obliged, much obliged. Uh, we got through. Take care, Dr. Kaju, as well. Anyway, have a good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night, wherever you are in the world. American mate, subscribe, much obliged, much obliged. Um, I'm a bit of a an ad hoc streamer. I'm no longer a World of Warships Legends CC, so but I, I do stream World of Warships Legends along with a couple of other other games, I guess you say. But yeah, I say thank you to Mecha Man, Action Pumper, Salty Sax, Soul Clue Adventures, Stuart Weir, uh, Pablo as well, uh, Animal Criv, Jeff Dave. Uh, who else do you have popped by today? Um uh, Sean Whitling as well, Randy Chang. Uh, DMB Dark Magic, much obliged. American Maid, Dasha Kaju, and James. Many thanks everyone for uh, for coming along. Um, but I, I, a bit of an ad hoc, hour and a half long stream, focusing on the Drake. Almost starting off doing a bit of a review of what she, what the stats are like, looking at the armor scheme, play a couple of games with her unupgraded, play a couple of games with her upgraded, a little bit of a discussion of uh, command builds, and I'll get this all time stamped so if you watch it when it's not live, uh, you can jump to the sections of interest. So, stay safe, stay well everyone, look after yourselves, and until next time, I'm the Gareth Major, and back to the port. <laughs>